What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here and this is Five Strange Facts, a show where we take a look at the weird side of gaming history. Few characters have ever achieved the pop culture icon status of Batman. The Dark Knight has been able to sell billions of comics, launch successful movie franchises, and best of all, get us some of the most magnificent action games ever made. There is something strange though. The more closely you examine this flawed hero, the more bizarre he seems. So this week, we're going to be doing that. Let's put on our detective hat and track down five strange facts about the Batman Arkham games. Number 5. The Cape of Time Sometimes, the smallest detail can make the biggest difference. When you're building a complex world with a huge cast of villains and a giant map, you need to make sure everything fits together perfectly or could leave the overall experience feeling incomplete. The designers working on Arkham Asylum figured this out early and wanted to make sure every facet of the game was exceptional. One part of Batman that is often overlooked is his almost magical cape. This billowing piece of cloth not only looks cool, but serves as a way for him to fly, stun enemies, and help him blend in with the shadows during stealth. The brilliant animation of his cape in these games isn't an accident. It all comes down to one man who spent two years just working on that. While other people may just see this as a simple piece of clothing, Rocksteady Studios took his fancy dark flaps very seriously, creating over 200 ways for it to move during combat and exploration. Imagine being that dude and dedicating such a large part of your life to staring at Batman's backside. Number 4. Insane Inspirations Each of the Arkham games has some moment where Batman starts to lose his head. Dealing with the loss of his parents and constantly facing death can take its toll on a man's mind, so just the right move can actually push him over the edge. When this happens, we sink into levels based entirely in hallucinations. These set pieces are remarkable to see because they're just so different from anything else ever shown off in the Batman universe. If you are curious where they got the idea for such reality bending plot lines, then you need not look further than the 2002 GameCube classic Eternal Darkness. In this game, our hero is slowly losing their grip on sanity as they travel around an old castle. A big part of the mechanics revolved around figuring out what was real and what was an illusion. The director of the Arkham series was deeply fascinated by this concept. Using this idea, he wanted to make it so that in each game, Batman would be forced to face his own darkest fears. Number 3. Steampunk Batman If you're a small company and you really want to make a big, licensed game, there's two paths you can take. You can either pitch your plans to the copyright holder and see if they'll grant you permission to start your project, or you can build a working prototype and see if they'll actually fund you finishing it. A few years before Rocksteady started working on the first Arkham title, we almost got a very different open-world Batman game. This is Gotham by Gaslight, a Victorian Age adventure that would have the Dark Knight stalking the streets of ancient London looking for Jack the Ripper. The main thing about this unfinished idea that got me really excited was that they wanted to mix this together with steampunk-style gadgets. It would have been awesome to see our modern hero being placed in such an old-school timeline. Before before the primary work on Gotham by Gaslight was underway, Warner Brothers told them no thanks, and this demo was left undone. While I'm still happy that we got the incredible Arkham series as it is today, I do wish that somehow Rocksteady Studios would go back and take their own crack at this experiment. Number 2. Hints of the Future Lining up projects ahead of time is always a smart move. However, what's a bit harder is laying out sequels before your first game is even done, and yet Rocksteady Studios managed to do this in a big way. Players discovered that after beating Arkham Asylum, you could go into Warden Sharp's office, go to the back wall, and cover it in explosive gel to break it open. This reveals a secret room with a full map of Gotham City and key locations marked on it. They clearly had major chunks of Arkham City already designed before they were even done working on Arkham Asylum. But wait, things get a bit weirder from here. In Arkham City, you can find a small boat hidden offshore. If you fly to it, there's a door that can be hacked. 
Using the password City of Terror, you can find containers filled with fear toxin, a thug who dies from the poison, and even Scarecrow's mask. This means that they already had him picked as the main villain for Arkham Knight, even though they wouldn't begin production on that project for years. All of this on its own is fantastic, but the coolest thing of all is this. While exploring the streets of Gotham in Arkham Knight, you can discover posters that refer to Superman and Metropolis. You can even get a voicemail from Lex Luthor himself. I think it's safe to say that our next adventure with the Dark Knight could be set far, far away. Number 1. Batman's Dance Party Rhythm is something woven into the very heart of the Arkham franchise. When the Caped Crusader fights, it's as fluid as watching ballet. The combat system makes it possible to take out groups of enemies with a single flawless combo. What if I told you that this clever feature was actually the original backbone for the entire series itself? The earliest version of this game was built around the rough concept of being a music-style action title. Essentially, they wanted Batman to sneak around and engage foes in almost Guitar Hero-like dance battles. There would be buttons that slide down the screen and you press them right as they landed on each foe. Tapping things at just the right time could lead to multipliers, improving your points and dealing more damage. It's surreal to think of the free flow combat system having evolved from something so bizarre, but I guess really it does make sense. This unique gameplay mechanic helped launch Arkham into a massive series, all because they wanted to see Batman and bust a move. Just the thought of seeing such a serious character foot sweeping bad guys all while dancing to music makes me laugh at the absurdity. And for that reason, I'm awarding this my pick as the strangest fact about the Arkham games. Did your favorite piece of trivia not make the list? Got an idea for a future episode? Leave it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Now, you know what? Since you watched all the way to the end, here's a little hint about what I'm thinking for the next top five. Can I, can I put this on my shoulder? This is not going so well. Look at that. It's a Bulbasaur. I'm thinking about doing Pokemon. You want Pokemon? Let's do Pokemon. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, maybe check out my last video. Please subscribe, and if you want, share this somewhere with your friends.